Pastor Mark, with my wife, Pastor Jackie, and our entire leadership team here at APK. And so we just receive today, amen? Amen. The vision of the house is training and equipping people to demonstrate God's kingdom in their everyday life. The mission of the house is populating the earth with mature ambassadors of Christ. And I just, my heart is just so full of the friendship of God this morning. Jesus said that he no longer called us servants, but friends. He said that servants don't know his master's business, but friends do. And so as I sit among a group of friends, I want to remind us today that Jesus has established friendship with us. He's made it possible for us to know the heart and the mind of our Father so that in any situation, in any circumstance, we can discern by God's grace and by the leading of the Holy Spirit what it is that God is saying to us, what it is that God is trying to accomplish in us, and what it is that God wants to not just do in us but through us, amen? And he does that in the context of community, and so we're so thankful for community today, amen? We're so thankful for what the Lord is doing, amen? If you have your Bibles today, if you can turn to Genesis chapter 2, we'll look at verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, amen? What did freedom look like in the beginning? Amen. What did freedom look like in the beginning? I want to remind us today that because we're in Christ, we're free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed, amen? God has delivered us so that he can develop us. And he develops us so that we can demonstrate the freedom that he's given us. He tells us in Galatians 5 and 1 that it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. He tells us to learn how to live as free men and women. Learn how to be steadfast in this liberty. Learn how not to be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. He says that this freedom doesn't empower us, amen, to live out our sinful nature, but rather to serve one another in love. Amen. So God, God calls us free this morning, amen. And so God doesn't just want us to be free, amen, in our vocabulary and our expression, but he wants us to be free in our thinking, free in how we process things, amen, free to agree with him free to agree that I am a son, I am a daughter of the Most High God, free to believe that I do have an inheritance. Friends, we have an inheritance today. And God is not withholding our inheritance from us. He's actually growing us and maturing us so that we can walk out our inheritance. He is not withholding anything from us. He's not holding anything back. He's withholding nothing. He's given us the best he has because he's given us Jesus. He's given us, amen, the Holy Spirit to live on the inside. So God's not withholding. And he doesn't want us withholding anything, amen? Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, amen? And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work it and to take care of it. Amen? And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. You are free to enjoy. You are free to take in all that I have provided for you. I have an abundance for you. I have a buffet for you. And you are free to take in as much as you can handle and process. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will certainly die. Amen? What does freedom look like from God's perspective? Freedom is the, the ability to understand, to submit to, and to enjoy God's purpose for my everyday life. Freedom is the ability to understand, to submit to, and to enjoy God's purpose for my everyday life as I demonstrate his kingdom as I demonstrate who he is, amen, as I demonstrate, amen, how he wants to manifest himself. 
And so this demonstration, amen, empowers me to live a life of fruitfulness, to live a life, amen, where others can take and eat from what God is doing in my life, amen. So God desires me to be free. God develops me in his definition of freedom. And then God deploys me to demonstrate this freedom to others, amen. The first thing that God gives humanity, because again, this is an assignment for humanity, amen. And it's important to know because we have some of our Asian American brothers and sisters who are feeling isolated in our country right now. They're feeling like, amen, because of some of the hate crimes that have been committed against them, they're feeling like even though they are Americans, they really are not a part of America. And we're thankful that when it comes to God's plan, God's plan is for humanity. It is not just for one culture or one gender. His plan is for humanity, amen? His plan is for all of humanity. Jesus is for everybody. And if we say that Jesus is for everybody, and in particularly if I say that Jesus is in me, then others should be able to eat from what Jesus is doing in my life. Amen? That's right. So God desires for us to be free. God develops in us his demonstration of freedom. And God deploys us to demonstrate freedom to others. The first thing God gives humanity is responsibility in the form of a role of supervision, management, and oversight. The first thing that the Lord gives us is responsibility by giving us a place to grow in our maturity, grow in our ability to manage things, grow in our ability, amen, to communicate, grow in our ability to manage our thinking, manage our thoughts, manage our perspective, amen. He says, listen, I'm going to put you in a place where you can grow, where you can thrive, where you can take on responsibility, but I'm not going to overload you with responsibility, amen? A lot of times when we're raising our children, we'll start them off and we'll give them chores and an allowance, amen? We'll tell them, okay, I'll give you a dollar if you do the dishes, amen? We don't want to put too much pressure on them, amen? We'll give you a dollar for making their bed, amen? We'll give you a dollar for vacuuming, amen? We give them a dollar, and at the time, they want $200 for something that really isn't worth that. And so we try to bring them along, right? That's why when we first start our first jobs at McDonald's, it's minimum wage, amen? I don't know about you guys, but when I started at McDonald's, I was making $3.35 an hour, and I was excited, amen? Now, nah, that was back in the 80s, amen? But I was so excited, three three thirty five. Now, if you knew where I lived and how I was raised, three thirty five was like a million dollars, amen. And I was excited about the wage, but I lost my excitement when I got to work. Oh, I wanted the wage. I wanted the wage. Listen, they used to credit my little meal. Listen, <laughs> and y'all know how it was back then. You know, you, you tell them you want a cheeseburger, put, put, put three pieces of meat on there, amen? <laughs> and so I was excited about the wages, but I wasn't always excited about the work. And so I wasn't ready for General Motors. I wasn't ready for Myers back then. I was only ready for McDonald's because of my thinking and my believing. Because if God would have allowed me to get in other places, I would have sabotaged myself because of my thinking and my believing. So the first thing he tells his man, the first thing he tells his son is, listen, you are free to enjoy every tree, everything that I put in the garden, you're free to enjoy it. Say you're free. God wants us to enjoy. Part of being responsible is learning how to enjoy. If responsibility is all work and there's no enjoyment, I'm going to be frustrated. 
God wants me to enjoy relationship. My father wants me to enjoy spending time with him. Jesus wants me to enjoy walking with him. He doesn't want my relationship to be a chore. He doesn't want it to be a drudgery. He doesn't want it to feel like it's such a burden. He said his burden is easy. He said his yoke is light. If I'm truly linked with him, if I'm truly walking with him, my days should become lighter. My burden should be decreasing. So he says that, amen. The first thing God gives humanity is responsibility in the form of a role. Responsibility in the form of a role. Responsibility in the form of a role. He doesn't just give them a role without responsibility. This responsibility is twofold. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to till it and to keep it, to till the ground, to work the ground, to, to accomplish things, to serve him, but also to worship, amen, to worship. To work was to worship. To work was to worship. The way that Adam worshiped was by doing his work as unto the Lord. When Adam went to work, he went to worship. When Adam went into his assignment, he went into worship. Worship was defined by his attitude. Worship was defined by his belief system. Worship was defined by his speech. Worship was defined, watch this, by his ability to partner with God. He didn't leave God at home when he went to work. He didn't say, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll be back about 6 o'clock and we'll get back together. No, <laughs> he was in step with the Lord while he was working, and this empowered his attitude. This empowered his attitude. This caused him to enjoy his labor. Yes, he was working. He was tilling the ground, amen. He was working, but along with working, he was worshiping. Now, he wasn't worshiping his work. He wasn't worried about his workload. Why? Because he wasn't by himself. He was worshiping his God, and his worship empowered him to manage his work. His worship empowered him to be able to delegate his responsibilities in terms of time management. He had a number of tasks that he had to do throughout the day, but he had to manage those things. Which things were important? Which things could wait? So imagine with this kind of attitude how excited he was about work. The alarm went off. Listen, his eyes were open before the alarm. There was no snooze. There was no need to snooze. He was like, let's get it. Let's get after it, amen. He didn't, listen, there wasn't even any coffee in the garden, amen. He didn't need his morning joe to get it going, amen. He was up out of the bed, amen. Can't you see him getting dressed? Da, 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 amen. He was ready to go in the morning, amen. He was in the mirror like, listen, work, you don't know it, but your boy is coming and I'm bringing it today. <laughs> wow, what if that's how our morning started? <laughs> but listen, he didn't separate his worship from his work. That's what freedom does. Why is everybody on the screen smiling? Because they don't separate their worship from their work. Because their worship empowers them to work. This responsibility is twofold. Till the ground, toil, work, serve, accomplish, worship, and as a result, his son had a deep satisfaction that lasted throughout the day. But not only did he work and worship, he s it says he put him in the garden to tend it and to keep it. It means to be focused, to be locked in, to be aware. He managed his thought life. He managed his emotions. If you go back and if you read Genesis 1, 26 through 28, right, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit said, let us make mankind 
in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over all the things that crawl along the ground. Listen, God never gave humanity dominion over humanity. He never gave us dominion over each other because he was the dominion and he wanted us to willingly submit to him and to willingly submit to each other. This is why we don't like being told what to do because it conflicts with the spirit of management on the inside of us. God's plan was for the entire earth to be full of supervisors, managers, and overseers whether they had the position or not. Because when we have that kind of mindset, imagine how productive all of us are. Our boss is just there to pay us. <laughs> our boss is there to make sure that they get our pay right and get our vacation days in. Other than that, we're managing the situation. We're managing the circumstances. We almost can find out a way for the company to kind of get rid of them. Hey, listen, if we can get rid of them, can I get part of their salary? <laughs> now, we don't have to worry about that because we live in a sinful, fallen world. So we're going to need somebody to tell us what to do. <laughs> But that wasn't God's plan in the beginning, okay? No, we're going to need somebody to tell us what to do, amen? Adam was self-motivated, not work-motivated. <laughs> Adam was self-motivated. Adam was a free thinker. Now, it's interesting because when God creates Adam, Adam is a full-grown man, not a boy. Because his responsibility calls for him to be an adult in his thinking and in his ability to process. Now, Adam, he has a mind, but it has to be developed. So how does God develop his mind? By revealing to Adam who he is and also giving Adam something to do. I, you know, when we don't have something to do, we get bored. And when we get bored, instead of being creative, we can be constipated. Instead of allowing the creative juices to flow, we can get stopped up. We can get kind of backed into a corner. But that isn't how it was for Adam. Adam was managing himself. Adam had the responsibility of managing himself by submitting himself to God's word, by walking in relationship with the Lord. Nothing here was forced. He just was walking in relationship, learning about the Lord, learning about himself, learning about the earth, learning about the earth's resources, learning about all the different plants, all the different trees, all the different fruit. He was managing the earth and its resources. He was a part of a domain that needed a king to manage it, not just a servant. He needed a king's mindset. He needed a king's way of thinking about things. He wasn't inferior. He wasn't self-conscious. He was conscious of how God created him, and that caused him to be excited. He said, listen, son, you're free. You're free to manage this the way I would manage this. You're free to supervise this the way I would supervise this. You're free to oversee this the way that I would see this, which is why you need to spend time with me. You need to get my mind. You need to get my heart. You need to get my perspective. You need to get my expectation. You need to get my belief system in you so that you literally manage this the way that I would, but it's filtered through your personality. Which means you can have two people doing the same job and they know the principles, but it's going to look different because it must flow through their personality. Amen. So God could trust him. Because God had raised him up 
and God had grown them up and God had matured them to a place where, listen, the father could stay in heaven and yet his will could be done in this realm through a human being. His will could be done. The garden was the place of training and equipping, but the earth was his destiny. The garden was the place where he was trained and equipped, but the earth was his destiny. If you go back and read Genesis 1, 26 through 28, right? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and come against everything that tries to stop you from being fruitful, multiplying, and replenishing. So God's plan was to train him in the garden, but to send him out into the world. This is why as kids, when we're growing up, some of us, we like to travel. We like to go to other parts of the planet. We like to go, and we like to be out, and we like to, some of us, we like nature. We like these different things. We like being outside. Some of us are indoors, amen? But sometimes, amen, when we're not reared in the right environment, amen, we don't allow all that we are to come to fruition so that the fullness of who we are, others are able to eat from. So the first thing he told him is, he said, you're free. The second thing he said, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He gives him freedom, but then along with his freedom, he gives him boundaries. When we truly have a management, a supervisor, or an overseer mindset, we won't just look for freedom, we will also look forward to boundaries. We won't just have this, there's this whole battle right now in our country over freedom and rights. But you don't find any talk about my rights in this scripture. We don't find any talk or any words that are dealing with, well, I have the right to do this or I have no. What we have the right to do is to be managers, overseers, submitted and stewards over what God is doing, not what we want done. Too many times today when I hear the word freedom, it's attached to what I want, not what God wants. It's attached to how I want the world to look based upon my culture, based upon my skin color, based upon my gender, based upon my experiences, based upon my expectation. And that is such a small definition of freedom. And the problem is that freedom can never compare to what we had at the beginning. If you look at the pictures, you see multiple skin colors and multiple genders, but the one thing you see is everybody smiling because everybody is free and everybody treats the other person like they're free. We don't see any slaves in the picture up there <coughs> because this was for humanity, not just for one culture or for one gender. So the first thing that the Lord gave the man was responsibility, not a role. If I'm honest, too many times in my life I've wanted roles while not really being ready for the responsibility. I've raised my hand to do stuff that I wasn't responsible for, but I've convinced myself that I could handle the role. Amen? As a matter of fact, I'm reminded of a story. Uh, a lot of people around me were being promoted. Amen? And you know how it is. Everybody's getting promoted around you. So guess what? The word of the Lord to you is it's time to be promoted. Amen. <laughs> that, that, that's just how it was for me. Amen. And everybody was being promoted. And I remember my wife was going through the process of being promoted. And I, it's funny. Others can be promoted and you can be satisfied. But then when they get promoted, it can awaken your flesh. And so she was. Amen. She was doing some interviews and some people were working with her and she didn't even know I was listening in on her interview process. And they had questions and they were coaching her and I was over there like, yeah, yeah. And I was actually stealing from her process without going through her process. 
And it's interesting how the Lord will allow things to happen so you can see where you are. So lo and behold, an interview came up. And I signed up for the interview. And on the low, I was thinking about what, what is it that you, what, what notes did she, and I was trying to, you know, you don't want anybody to know, so I was kind of asking questions on the slide. <laughs> and I was taking her little cues, and I got in the interview, amen, and I took all of her little notes, and I was in the interview talking good, y'all. All of y'all would have hired me. I mean, I was talking good. <laughs> and got to the end, and why do you think? We should give you this job where well, you know blah 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 and blah 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 and I could do this and I could do that. And I had no idea about the weight of the responsibility that I was asking for. And I left the interview and I was like, man, I knocked it out of the park. I said, I know I'm gonna get this job. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit finally spoke. <laughs> 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 and here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, just remember how you start something is how it's going to finish. If we start in the flesh, we can't just jump in the spirit. If we start in the spirit, we can stay in the spirit. And you know how you, you know how the Lord will speak and you try to act like you didn't hear that? <laughs> Holy Spirit was like, okay, I'm only going to say it once. <laughs> so then they called me and they said, we want to offer you the job. And boy, my heart was thumping through my chest. And I said, you know, <laughs> I want to take the job, but uh, right now I think I should stay where I am. What? I said, no, I, I think I should stay where I am. And then some other people called me and were like, what do you mean you're not taking the job? Now, I wasn't honest. I didn't tell him that I probably <laughs> shouldn't have applied at that time. I made up something, you know. <laughs> and people were upset because they were like, no, 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 that's not how this works. You, you have to take it. I'm like, no, I don't. And so I stayed in my role longer, and I'm glad I did because the weight of the responsibility would have crushed me. <laughs> Mess around with my wife. <laughs> See, that's the spirit of irresponsibility, see? <laughs> Those are the mindsets. Every opportunity that comes, why, why, while God may allow the opportunity, it does not mean that we're supposed to take the opportunity. Sometimes we're supposed to take a deeper look at our heart and our motives. So he gave his man a responsibility in the form of a role. What did freedom look like in the beginning? Freedom always starts with the ability to be responsible, not the ability to choose. If you notice here, Adam doesn't make a choice. It says the Lord God took him and put him where he wanted him to be. So freedom does not start with the ability to make a choice. It starts with the ability to be taught how to make responsible, mature, self-controlled choices in a controlled environment. This is why they're smiling. Because if I would have took that job, I wouldn't be smiling. Or if I was smiling, I'd be frowning on the inside, right? A smile is a frown <laughs> turned upside down. <laughs> if we don't grasp that freedom starts with the ability to be responsible, we will always be frustrated because we're not ready. God desires for us to be free. God develops in us, in us his definition of freedom. And God deploys us to demonstrate 
give freedom to others. He gives the man responsibility in the form of a role. He doesn't ask him where he wants to go. Notice he doesn't ask him, what do you want to do with your life? <laughs> he doesn't ask him, what do you want to do when you grow up? He puts him in a place. He gives him clear instructions. And then he steps back to see how are you going to manage this freedom that I've given you? Because if you're faithful over a few things, I can make you ruler over many. And if you can manage somebody else's stuff, I can give you your own. Mismanagement happened in the place of training and equipping, but God had a plan. Adam and Eve's destiny was the earth, not the garden. Let's make sure that we don't make the place where we are our destiny, but rather let the place where we are be the place where God will develop us. Amen. You're free. Free to be responsible, free to be mature, and free to walk in self-control. And listen, friends, the Holy Spirit manifests self-control as we partner with him. He provides everything that we need as he partners with us. This is why friendship with God is so important. Because when I develop the friendship, the friendship aspect of our nature, I'll stop believing that he's a controller and I'll be able to receive his counsel. You're free to eat. You're free to take in. You're free to enjoy. But freedom always brings responsibility. Amen. What does freedom look like in the beginning? Father, I thank you for your grace today as we listen and as we receive. Thank you for the adjustments that you're making in our heart and in our thinking. We trust you. We listen for your voice. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for times of refreshing. Thank you for times of grace. Lord, as we're in this pruning season in our lives, just like outside, we're cleaning out our flower beds, we're, we're pulling out the dead things, we're removing, amen, those things that uh, died, those things that would stop new growth from coming forth. I pray, Lord, that we allow you to cut away those things mm -hmm. that try to keep us from being irresponsible. Thank you for cutting away those things that try to stop us from maturity. And thank you for pruning away those things that try to block the Holy Spirit's ability to develop self-control in us. Thank you for your grace as we listen, as we allow you to lead us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What does freedom look like in the beginning, amen? Amen. What a powerful word. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Even at home, even here, those who are here. Amen. <laughs> I, I was thinking when Pastor was talking, um, one of the words is, you know, don't skip the process. A lot of times we want the promotion, but we don't want the process. And when we skip the process, we, we miss out on key, uh, key, uh, key points of wisdom that God wants to give us. So some things God says, I just need you to wait. Don't miss the process. Don't, don't try to overstep the process. And sometimes we want to run through the process. Oh, I don't need that. It's sometimes they uh, uh, promote kids who are in second grade. They might have a fifth grade level of learning. And they take them from second grade to maybe fourth or fifth or whatever. And they might know, uh, they, can, they can be educated, but there are certain principles that they don't get because they skip third and fourth grade. Amen. And there are certain things that we need before we get promoted. And, there, and I, I thank God all the time. Lord, thank you 
for not promoting me when I thought I should have been promoted. Because had I been promoted when I thought I should have been promoted, I probably wouldn't have lasted. But in that process of preparation, it prepared me for what was coming my way when I got into the position. So there are certain things God is saying now for us to wait till I promote you. Wait, uh, you know, learn the key steps during the process, amen? It's not that God is denying you. He's actually saving you, saving you from self-destruction, self-sabotage, amen? Because sometimes he, wa he wants to bring us to a place and we can self-sabotage our own destiny because we did not want to wait or look at someone else in getting promotion. Me and Pastor, we still laugh about that story because he, he had all the right answers. He just didn't go through the process. We can, uh, anybody, we can always mem memorize someone else's answer, but are we willing to go through the process? Amen. And God is about longevity. And when I was leaving this morning, it's so interesting. You keep hearing in our world today, I just want to get back to the normal. I want to get back to normal. I want to get back to normal. And, and, and God was telling me this morning, daughter, set up a church. Don't get back to the normal like the world wants to get back to the normal. He said, even when they get back to the normal, don't lose the wisdom that you gained during the lockdown. Don't lose the wisdom that I've given you during this, uh, the period of the pandemic. He said, don't lose the wisdom because there are some things that God has, uh, uh, he so instructed us during this so-called shutdown, during this so-called, he said, they want to get back to the normal. But has anybody stopped to ask me what I want them to do? Because look, we all were close to God when we couldn't go nowhere. But now, look, freedom comes with responsibility. Now, you know, the country is opening back up, per se. Now the weather is getting nice. Now when we were all locked in, look, everybody was online Sunday morning, Wednesday night, people were looking for a church. Now you see, and I, I, I watched this, the sun is out, the snow is disappearing, this spring break, everybody doing, everybody, and you'll see the numbers go down even online because everybody is getting back out to freedom. He said, tell them, don't lose the ground that you've gained. Amen. He says, don't lose the ground that you've gained. Don't lose the wisdom that you've gained during this, uh, this time period. Amen. So those are just some wisdom, you know, words of uh, wisdom this morning to share with the, don't lose the wisdom. Don't lose the ground that you've gained during this season. And getting back to normal, ask God, what does my normal look like? What should my normal look like? What should it look like? Ask him. Don't go by the news and uh, these other words out there. Ask God. What should I be honed in on in this season? Because there are certain things that God has told us to turn away from even during the shutdown. He said, don't go back to that. There are certain things he showed us clear as day that shouldn't have, have been on our plate anyway. He said, don't go back to that. Because freedom, become, you know, it comes with responsibility. Amen. We're all free. We're free to choose because God's not going to make you make the right decision. He said, here you go. Now you choose. Amen? That's, look, that because God loves us, and he sees everything down the road and around the corner. Amen? That's the kind of God that we serve, a loving God who only has our best interests at heart. Amen?